What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays, I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at the differences between a class A fire rated product in a class A fire rated assembly. And in this video, I've got Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. So in this context, we're looking at standing seam metal roofing. That's our bread and butter here on the Metal Roofing Channel and at Sheffield Metals. So we're looking at class A fire ratings. So what does that mean when it comes to products first? What does it mean to have a class A rating? Class A is a determination based off a test standard, right? Class A is the highest fire rating that you can achieve. There's also a class B and a class C. Obviously those aren't as good as a class A is. Uh, the test standard we use is UL 790. That's, uh, that's how we achieve our class A rating. That's the test standard that we perform. So a class A rating is, is basically is the highest level of fire rating that you can get on a product. There's three different tests that are done for these uh, different classes. You got spread of flame, intermittent flame, and burning brand. And based on how the product performs during those tests, that's how the, uh, the, the rating is determined. So class A is, is the best performing, B is the next, C is the least. Well, I guess the least is if you can't get a rating at all. All right, so now let's talk about the topic of this video, the differences between a class A rated product and a class A rated assembly. What does that mean and why are they different? You can have a class A rated product, like a metal roof panel, right? It's metal, it's not gonna burn unless it's a very high temperature, right? But just because you have a class A rated product doesn't mean everything in the assembly is going to be, have that match that same rating. A lot of times, you know, you see different scenarios come into play, especially when you're dealing with wood substrates, when you're installing over wood, because if you have a metal deck and you have a metal panel, none of those items are combustible. They're considered non-combustible materials. Getting a class A rated assembly in those, in those scenarios is, is a lot easier, but you start throwing wood or other combustible materials into the assembly, now you have to start taking other steps to protect the combustible materials in the assembly to get the class A rating for the whole assembly. Let's say in my assembly, I've got some combustible materials. Does that automatically mean that I can't get a fire rated class A assembly? No, it's just going to mean that you have to add more things to the assembly to protect those combustible materials. Two of the main things that I see, you know, what in, in our industry and what, how it's done kind of a more old school way is using a dense deck on top of the combustible material or the plywood or OSB deck, right? That's what's going to be combustible. You take and you put a certain thickness of dense deck down. The thickness is going to be determined by what the class A fire rating dictates. And then you basically move on to your assembly after that. So it would be plywood, dense deck, underlayment, metal panel. Another option that is popular is a product called GAF VersaShield. It is a fire rated product. It comes in a roll like underlayment. It rolls on the roof and based on the type of material you're using for your metal panel and the type of deck you're going over, it can pretty much bring any assembly up to a class A rating using either one or two layers of this product. The reason I say it's, it's, it's probably more preferred is just because of the ease of use, right? It rolls on like an underlayment. Uh, it's not as heavy as Dens deck is, so you don't have a lot of additional weight. And it's just easier for the installers to put on. So what is included in an assembly? So assembly is anything from the deck up. The metal panel and what you're attaching it to. So it could be plywood, underlayment, metal panel. It could be plywood, underlayment, insulation, metal panel. It's, it's the whole assembly of the actual roof system from the attachment point. So from the deck up is any, anything involved from the deck up is your assembly. So if I'm a contractor who's looking to install metal roofs in, in California, or if I'm a homeowner, property owner who wants a metal roof for my building, you know, how does this information translate into practical application? Definitely California, but you know, quite honestly, in any circumstance that you're installing a new roof, you need to check your local jurisdictions to find out what your area requires, because every area might be different. Those codes and standards specific to your area are going to dictate what your roof needs to perform as. I can pretty much guarantee you roofs in California are going to have different requirements than the roofs in Florida because it's based on the geographic location and what, what the concerns are for that area. Anytime you're doing a, a new roof or a re-roof, it's important to find out what the proper codes are, what the requirements you're going to have to meet are before you ever purchase a roof system. 
hopefully, you know, the contractors you're dealing with in those areas are going to be up to speed on what your area is going to require, and they can be a resource for you and guide you into the, you know, a proper assembly for that area that you're in. Cool. And on that note, I think we're ready to wrap up the video. Really appreciate the information, Jeff. Uh, it's been super helpful. If you have any questions, please comment down below and remember to check your local jurisdiction uh, for all the requirements that your roofing system will need. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.